course he could not and she was accepted and the reason why the world is in the t torment it is is because you don't accept your role and they don't accept who you are so they can't be blessed they can't so you can laugh at the world while the world is burning you can walk down the street because you know that Yahweh God, everything he said to you is a promise. Look up the word promise. He said, and I promised Israel. That's a beautiful statement. There are words in here. There are beautiful things in here. And truly, if you live it, Yahweh going to manifest. What's the sister said? She saw the angel come in the house. She said, her house needed. Tell him, sister. Listen, my, my house hasn't been painted like, since I've lived in here. Going on six years, and I was sitting at the dining table, and I seen this glow through my whole house as though I had a fresh paint job, and I knew it wasn't stirred at y'all. And I was just so relieved you know, and at peace, you know, and realizing, wow, this is the house of y'all, my house belongs to, and I was, you know, in control, and I was just amazed at that. If you don't believe me, yeah. pray in your house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get on your knees. Mm -hmm. Tell you how and talk to him. He want to hear. He said, "I love to hear the prayers of what." Right. 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 Zadik is beautiful, and this is what we're striving for. He said, yeah. "Thou shalt rehearse the righteous acts," and we rehearse. And what happens in rehearsal? There's mess ups. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's why it's a rehearsal. Right? That's right. <laughs> See, and therefore I want to encourage this. I want to encourage you to encourage you. I want you to know your imperfections will lead you to perfection. I want you to become conscious. I don't want you to ever be arrogant. I want you to be humble. I want you to be like a child, knowing one thing. Ain't nobody can bother you. Because yeah, I was said to you, he said, look, comfort ye, comfort ye. My people, why? Because we're weary. <laughs> Brother, they had beat us so bad in the world, man, we're weary. He said, speak what? Comfortably to Jerusalem. And what he said, he said, tell them, what he said, tell them their warfare has been accomplished. And what their sins have been pardoned. For I have given them double for all that they have done. So we're not here, we're just here waiting. We're in the waiting mode. And you should look up, you, 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 we're waiting, that's all. And let me tell you something, waiting is hard. Because people get discouraged. Oh, God ain't coming. It's not that he's coming, he's already here. Don't look for something to come. It's hard to look what you already have. What you already have is hard to find. You, are, you have been accepted. Your thing is eternal. Time, forget about time. Time has nothing to do with you. He said you are everlasting people. Let's go to Psalm 106. Psalm 106. And verse 48. 106-48. You are everlasting people. And therefore, what does it say? Blessed be Yahweh, 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 Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. And let all people say, Amen. Praise ye Yahweh. That's right. Blessed be Yahweh. What? The God of what? Israel. He didn't say he was the God of anybody else. He said what? From everlasting to everlasting. Why? Because he's an everlasting God. Hey, right? He's such, your God is such an everlasting God. He has said to you, and he's such a beautiful God. Let's go to Jeremiah 31, verse 3. Can somebody read that? I got to read that. Because see, he's giving you what? He's an everlasting God, and he's giving you what? Read this. Jeremiah 31, Jeremiah 31 verse 3. Yahweh hath appeared of old unto me, saying... Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built. 
O virgin of Israel, thou shalt again be adorned with the tabrets, and shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. That's right. So he said to him, what he said, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful, my, my, my brothers and sisters, I don't think there's anything that can be more beautiful than that. But we have trouble. We have trouble. And let's start talking about where the trouble is. Let's go to St. Matthews. And I'm going to tell you where the trouble is because we got trouble, my brothers and sisters. But I want to I wanna give you and show you where that trouble lies. Let's go, let's say St. Matthews. Chapter. Chapter 10, verse 34 to 36. Okay. What does it say? Think not that I, that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. Mm. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. That's right. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. What did he say? Man's foes be they. He said, man, this is the beginning of trouble. <clears throat> Let's go to Micah. Let's go to Micah. Because I want to show you that we got some situation brewing. But Yahweh God wants to put us in an alliance to truth. And when, when you understand that alliance of truth, Yahweh God, Micah chapter 7 verse 6. Micah chapter 7. Go ahead. For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter riseth up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. That's right. See, see, this is what is happening. It's so beautiful, but Yahweh God. Let's go in the book of Ecclesiastes. I want to show you. No, right here. Uh, Ecclesiastes 7, 14. So don't be surprised when circumstances happen in your house. Yeah, 14. It says, Allah has set the one over against the other to the end that man should, should, should find nothing after him. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider. Allah also has set the one over against another. Um, Ecclesiastes 7, verse 14. Okay. You got? No. No, it's not 14. It's not 14. Excuse me. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 14. Fourteen. Yeah. yeah, I just read in between. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. So he said, Allah has set these variants one against another. You understand what I'm saying? And let's go to um Saint Matthew's twenty-four. Saint Matthew's twenty-four. I want to move kind of swift now. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's it. Uh, not faster than I can move. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You, you, you have to excuse me. Um, uh, St. Matthew's 24, verse 7. What? For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So he said because he's putting one against another. Jeremiah 30, um, 25. Jeremiah 25. I want to show you that these things are being set one against another. 25, 25, verse 32. Um, what does it say? Thus saith the Allah, I am not opposed. Behold, evil shall go forth, from, go, go forth from nations to nations, 
and a great whirlwind shall be rise up from the coast of the earth. See, so these things, Yahweh God is putting one against another. Let's go into Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. 42 verse 22. 42 verse 22. 42 verse 22. I would like to read this to you so that you will know that there's nobody going to help us. I want to read this. I'm starting in the middle, but I'll read all. For a prey and none said deliver. For a spoil and none say restore. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. And they are hidden in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivers for a spoil. And, and none delivered for a spoil. And none said restore them. Nobody says restore you. No. Mm -mm. Who says that? Nobody. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Why? Deuteronomy 28. This is the master book. If they had taken this out, you'd be in trouble. Okay, Deuteronomy. None say restore. 28 verse... 68 and it says here and there shall ye be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you nobody because remember in our land if we was in a circumstance somebody could buy us and it says and Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you. Let's go to the same chapter. And let's find out who is our Savior. And, um, 20, because see, I like to let you know who's going to save you. Let's go to 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. No man. If he's a man, he ain't save you. Why? Mm. Why? Let's go to Hosea. I want to show you who's your, your savior. What if you're going to tell somebody that something ain't going to happen? Let, let's see who is it. Hosea 13 9. What did he say? Uh, I ain't get it yet. <laughs> okay. 13 9. He said, uh, what did he uh, say? Oh, Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me. Is thy help. So Yahweh God said, Oh Israel, you have destroyed yourself. Don't he say didn't it say my people will destroy my people? It didn't say people. Right, right. It said my people. Always that's a word of endearment. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh God said, My people will destroy for a lack of knowledge. He said, But in me you can have help. Let's go to Isaiah sixty. Isaiah sixty. Isaiah 60, because I want to show you who is our saved. Verse 16. Thou, thus shall thou suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shall suck the breasts of kings, and, sh and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh, that, that I, Yahweh, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. So Yahweh is your Redeemer. He is your Savior. Let's go to Isaiah 40, 43. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, 43, 14. Isaiah 43, 14. And it says here, Thus said Yahweh, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have set sent to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans who cry is in the ships. So Yahweh God is saying that he is your savior. He is your redeemer. 
Let's go to to Isaiah 43. 43. 43. We had where well, we was 43, 41. Let's go to 41. 41, 3. Um, here. Here go 41, 3. It says, He pursued them and and passed safely, even by the way that he has not. Let me see. Oh no, what? 43. I'm sorry. Who is that? 43. So it's 41. Let's discontinue that one. Uh, let's go down to um, Isaiah 54. Uh, Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. Okay, let's go to from 54. Let's go to 57. 54, 50, so, 57? Yeah. No. Yeah, let's go to 57. Isaiah. Starting at 17. 57 and 17. Isaiah 57. Yeah, Isaiah 57 and 17. For the iniquity of his covetedness was I wrought and smored him. I hid him. I, I hid me and was wrought, and he went on forward in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comfort unto him. And to his mourners, I created the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, said Yahweh. And I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, who waters cast up mirror and dust. There is no peace, said Yahweh, Allah to the wicked. So we see that there is no peace. And Yahweh God is saying, Restore, he said, he said, I will restore comfort unto him. Yahweh God is a God, and we should be very thankful that everything he has said, it is relative to our growth as a, as, as a people, so that we might, so that we might grow and not fall by the wayside. I would like to thank everybody for your patience. And I would like to let you know that in the book of Romans, Romans, he tells you why we're coming back. In the book of Romans 11.25, he tells you very clearly, Romans 11.25, he says this very clearly. He says that blindness is in part is happening. In other words, all Israel was not blind. <laughs> and this is why we're coming back because there were those doing slavery that knew. Right. And Paul was telling them, he says, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentile be come in. He told them that. He, did, he told me. he said, no, this ain't a forever thing. Even in the book of, of, of Luke, twenty uh, um, Saint Luke, twenty one, twenty four, he said, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down unto the Gentiles unto the time of the Gentile be fulfilled. He told them that this would be happen, and when we go into the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 25, he makes reference to us being moved throughout into the whole, all the kingdoms of the earth. It says, For Yahweh caused thee to be smitten before thy enemies. What chapter is that? That's um, Deuteronomy 28, 25. Yahweh shall cause thee to be smitten before thy enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them, and thou shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And that was that was you. You know, and therefore in the book of uh, of Joel, Joel told you what they would do to your land. Mm. He tells you. Joel tells you. Joel 
tells you what they would do and what their whole purpose was in, 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 in dividing your land. And therefore, in so doing, he tells you so that you will not stumble in not having the right perceptivity of what will trans with the transaction that will occur in your in your in your very eyes in, in Joel chapter three verse two. He says, They have scattered them among the nations and have parted my land. I will also gather gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. That's what they've done. Yes. They've yes. done that. We've been scattered. But Yahweh God has brought us back. I would like to say in my closing, may Yahweh bless each and every one of us. May the spirit of our God rest upon us. May we know that we are gracious and wonderful people, but never to be arrogant, but ever humble. I thank everybody for coming, and I pray that the spirit of obedience <coughs> rests upon us. Amina. Amina. We're about to daily close, but I'd like to comment on something. Because certain programs I watch, the average Hebrew brother watch. I'm watching this thing be lectured. Mm. So the man Barak, that's Hebrew. The man is Hebrew, but they say he's a Muslim. Right. I picked up in his discourse. He is a Hebrew. But they will not say he's Hebrew or Israelite. They're going to say he's a Muslim. Barak means to bless. So he broke that down to them the other day. I said, bring it to them, brother. You're a Hebrew Israelite, and you know it. But they don't want to say you. Don't want to come in conflict with this man that calls himself a Jew. The man is a Hebrew Israelite. That's why he's so dynamic and so magnetic. That's why. Yes. And as the brother said, in the writings of Paul, Paul said, never said Jehovah showed him anything. But what he said, I speak by permission. So I was talking to the so-called called, so -called witness yesterday. And he was quoting what Paul said. I said, I have a right to it. He said, why? Paul said, what? I have a right to my opinion. Right. Okay, Paul and he said Jehovah took him up into the spirit. All the prophets say Jehovah showed them things. But Paul never said that. He said, I write by permission. He was a great astrologist. And he knew by the change of time what energies would be released into the universe. And if you found an affinity with that energy, you become a minister of that energy. And you tell the teacher to other people. See, the Bible is great. This is the greatest book ever was written. Believe it or not, every nation has taken part of our writings and translated according to the personality and the clients of their people and spread it out through the world. They don't use the Quran. They don't, you don't swallow no Quran. You don't swallow on the high books of India. You don't swallow. Why? They know this is our law, our constitution, but we don't know it. We don't know it. He has been a, done a great disservice to this book and to us. That's why the world is in a turmoil today, only on account of us. All nations came together. Psalms 83 and 3. Let us come together, all of them, that the name of Israel will be no more in their remembrance. When you say Israel now, they think you're talking about the land. Yes. Israel is a nation. That's, right. That's Jerusalem. So you can see what our enemy has done. Call himself Israel. The land is Israel and he's a Jew. He adopted this thing to the range of the Tsars in Russia. He knew nothing about it. And sent to Spain to get the Hebrew brothers of color to teach him. And when she learned it, he was instrumental in getting us out the East so he would have no opposition. <coughs> they tried to say they wasn't involved with the slave trade. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. They were involved, highly involved. So, <coughs> there's no more I can say than what the rabbi has said. He has covered everything. And he is a good Hebrew teacher. 
I know a young lady been going to Brooklyn for 10 years. Just got a book with a whole lot of words. Mm. I tried to teach her, but she wouldn't come. She knows everything. <laughs> she knows everything. Is she here today? Is Sister Audrey here? No. <laughs> she said she can sit at OTB every day. Yeah, yeah. I asked her, yes. I said, you say you're sick. I said, why don't you go? You've been trying to learn Hebrew, and I tried to teach you. But you taught me, and you didn't know the alphabets. So I shut my mouth. I said, Brother Adams mainly taught himself. And he's teaching the way that Rabbi Bibbin taught us. In six weeks, we could get up and read that Torah from the beginning to the end. The method he is teaching you is the best method ever was designed. So Yahweh had to show him. He taught himself, right, Ah? And I had help from him. A very little. I'm sorry, I still had help. A very little help. <laughs> Just a little push. But he has really advanced in the language. And he's teaching right, too. He's teaching right. And I heard a program about three weeks ago. And this Muslim said, and Jesus got up in the temple and he spoke in Arabic. Because the lie was told. It said Jesus stood up in the temple and he spoke in the Hebrew language. In the Hebrew language. Not in our Arabic. He spoke in the Hebrew language. See, <clears throat> as Rabbi Bibbin told Malcolm X, Brother, you know the truth. He used to come up to our temple. He said, why don't you teach the truth? He said, Rabbi, they're not going to accept it. He said, but teach it anyway. Right. Right. So he says, that they could teach them where, teach them where they hear from there. The day will come when they know how had a prophet among them. That's right. They teach the truth whether they accept it or not. He said, boy, you're going to die with your shoes on. Mm. Didn't he die with his shoes on? Mm -hmm. Okay. So listen, <clears throat> as the brother just said, it's best not to hear than to hear it and don't do it. Mm -hmm. Because you have no cloak to cover your sin. The people out in the street, they have a chance. There's a chance. You try to go back into the world and you will not be accepted. Yeah. Try it. Nobody's going to accept you once you get this knowledge. Yeah. Even if you try to break away from it. You're going to be alone now. Yes, you will. They are not going to accept you. I'm trying to teach a group of guys in McDonald's. That's my, that's my school. <laughs> They're beginning to see it. They're beginning to see it. They're beginning to see it. And what did the old guy say to me? He said, every time I see you, you look more like a Jew every day. And more with rabbi. Said, yeah. And when he doesn't see you, he said, where's the rabbi? Yeah, he said, <coughs> where's he said, the rabbi? He said, you look more like a Jew. He's a nice guy. I respect you highly. Yeah, I respect you. He's from too. Jamaica. Yeah. And he said he never witnessed so much hate until they came to this country. Oh, In the islands, they have nothing. But they didn't undergo the persecution that we went through. I told them, mother, shut your mouth. I said, don't say what our people should do. I said, we've done everything. They burned it up. Rosewood, Black Wall Street, was running competition with Wall Street here. They claimed you raped a white woman. And they burned it up. Put so many thousands in the river. Then they wonder why all of these tornadoes and hurricanes are coming. You know what it says in the scripture? I plant my feet in the sea and I rise upon the storm. That's your house vehicle that he travels in. Anytime the wind can take up a piece of iron and bend it, huh? just like it's in a furnace when you're motor. Now you know the wind can't do that. That's the power of your house. So listen. You're learning something that will carry you through the world the rest of your life. I have my little five-year-old granddaughter. It's my daddy. We didn't say our prayer before we went out. She come to me and we have to say the Hebrew prayer. I said, because nothing would happen to you. I tried to teach the mother, which is my daughter. But they know. But they're not upholding it. I tried to teach my ex. She's in Florida. Anytime anything go wrong, she doesn't call the husband. Who she called? She called me. She called the main husband. She called me. <laughs> yes. If she have a dream, who interprets the dream? She called me to interpret it. Know why they left me? I had two. You said, you're too religious. Every time I come here in the morning, you're praying. Yes. You said, you ain't got nothing. You know what? I said, how? She said, I ain't got I told that number up the next day. Good. And she wanted the money. I said, I ain't going to give you nothing. 
I did give a five hundred dollar. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing. Yahweh is with us. If you live according to these scriptures, the best of your ability in captivity, call on Yah, and He's going to hear you. If I should get lonesome, I won't. Man, my phone started jumping off the hook. <coughs> I was sitting down this morning, getting ready to come in Howard South. Then Dr. Natali, you know her, okay. came by. And she's fused and confused to say the green. But I'm bringing her around. I'm bringing her around. And she sees. She has the basics. She sees. She knows a lot. And those are the people we got to reach. Yes. We got to be able to reach everybody. Yes. You don't step down on.